When I first went to Dr. Jackson's office, I saw a piece of paper taped above the doorknob. The piece of paper had a Martin Heidegger quote on it. The quote read, teaching is more difficult than learning because what teaching calls for is this, to let learn. The real teacher in fact lets nothing else be learned than learning. His conduct therefore often produces the impression that we properly learn nothing from him if by learning, we now suddenly understand merely the procurement of useful information. I always took that to be Dr. Jackson's teaching philosophy, and it's one that worked for me. He helped us all think for ourselves and he let us learn. Thank you, Dr. Jackson, for helping all of us. I studied with Rick all four years of my undergrad and went to four of his Europe trips. I probably have a million stories I could tell about Rick, um, but some of my fondest memories were probably on those cultural trips uh, where my assigned seat in the giant van was in between the front two seats on the, the bench seat where the giant gear shift was. Um, and ostensibly I was there because I have short legs and didn't need the room, but I think I was really there because Rick enjoyed pointing to buildings as we passed and telling me elaborate stories about the countess that used to live there or the act of defenestration that happened there or some poem that was written there that turned out to be complete crap. Um, and he would laugh at me for believing it later. Um, those were fantastic trips. Thank you, Rick. Can't wait to see you at the party. Hey, pal. Well, it's a big moment, a very big moment. I don't know what they're gonna do without you down there. You have been at UTC for so very, very long and have created such an amazing undergraduate program there, have launched so many students into successful MFA programs and successful careers. It's really pretty astonishing what you have managed to accomplish. Um, they'll miss you terribly and I know you'll miss it too. But I hope you have the time now to do some traveling and writing and things that you haven't had the time to do uh, in the past, certainly the freedom to do it. I want to thank you for all that you've done for me over the years. My visits to, to Meacham uh, were always really a highlight of my professional career. I loved coming down and working with your students and hanging out with other, other visiting writers there. And, um, I will I will always remember my time in Tennessee very, very fondly. Uh, and I will always uh, treasure our friendship, uh, which goes back, of course, so very many years. Um, I'm right behind you. Uh, I, I hope I won't be in the saddle too much longer. But uh, uh, I'm really pleased for you and uh, do hope uh, that you uh, remain happy and healthy and uh, and, and keep writing uh, uh, as you go. And uh, I wish nothing but the very best for the two of you. Okay. Take care, man. The first time I ever on a plane, the first time I ever left the country was to go on a trip to Eastern Europe with Rick. And then a year later, I decided to spend a year in Slovenia as a sort of exchange student. And now, 30 plus years later, I write books about Slovenia. I travel to Slovenia pretty frequently to see friends there. And it's just a huge part of my life that I wouldn't have without having had that experience with Rick. And so thanks, Rick, for that. Got most of these books from Rick over the years. I came into his workshop a total novice. And I learned, as Miłosz said, I want a good poetry without knowing it. Rick taught me that a lot of poetry is about reconciling the world outside yourself with the world inside yourself. My world's a lot bigger from having been his student. I got to travel to places I never would have gone, met amazing people I never would have met, made art that I never would have made. One of my favorite poems of his, Rick mentions this really beautiful moment, and he says, it's abandoned to us randomly as part of time's litter or its architecture. And I think of all these experiences and friends and poems that I know because of Rick. And then I think of another line from Jim Borska about life. You'd be wrong to think it's just a slapdash quiz. And I'm grateful. Thanks for everything, Rick. Sorry for getting sentimental. I was a member of Dr. Jackson's first Yuhan class and he was a blend of inspiring and intimidating. We all remember his fondness for gray corduroy pants and red-white pinstripe shirts. 
Dr. Kiva said she evaluated students based on whether the program would be good for them and them good for the program. I may not have been good for the program, but the program was definitely good for, for me. Dr. Jackson exposed us to a breadth of literature and ideas, and he tried to make us better writers. I don't know that I really appreciated that until I encountered others professionally and realized that not all college graduates can write coherent sentences and grammatically correct papers. I'd like to thank Dr. Jackson for having a huge impact on me and so many other students over the years. Thanks. Every day on the way to my Honors Humanities class, I took the opportunity to just slow down and peer into Rick Jackson's, and it struck me that invariably there was this expression on Rick's face of utter joy and excitement over the opportunity to talk and argue and wonder openly about art and ideas. Um, it breaks my heart uh, that Rick is retiring, but I know that he's going to remain an example for me um, as uh, about what a teacher um, can be, and I'm going to, to uh, rope him into returning as often as he will allow. So I love you, Rick. It's hard to pick just one memory that has to do with Rick, but I would have to say that all of the creative writing trips we went on throughout the years, from Portugal to New Mexico to AWP to Missouri, changed the trajectory of my life as well as who I am as both a poet and a person, as did all of the Meacham experiences. So I want to say thank you to Rick for being such a great mentor to me and so many other students. I would not be who I am without you. Thank you. Congratulations on your retirement, Rick. 45 years at UTC is an incredible accomplishment. Thank you for all you've done uh, for the department, for the university, for our students, and for our colleagues. You will be sorely missed. I'm going to miss our conversations, those wide-ranging discussions of poetry, of novels, of politics, of wine, of hockey. Enjoy your retirement. You've earned it. Hi, Rick. I really enjoyed doing interviews with you of prospective Honors College students. And I think that it's unfortunate that we were considered intimidating. I mean, one guy starts crying during an interview. It was completely unfair characterization. And here's a good example why. There, there was a high school senior that came through the door to our interview room, and she had a photo album with her, completely bedazzled and lace trimmed. And I was thinking, oh no, you can't bring decoupage to an interview, let alone an interview with Dr. Richard Jackson. But you were kind and patient, and you let her take us through every prom photo, English essay, and 4-H achievement of her senior year. That's compassion, not intimidation. I'm really happy that I've had opportunities to get to know you both inside and outside the classroom. You're an incredible person, writer, and teacher. And I wish you all the best and all joy in your retirement. So Rick, I wrote you a retirement song. I'd like to perform it for you real quick. Here's your retirement song. It won't last too long. And I'd also sing the ABCs, but I don't think I have enough time for that because I credit you with teaching me how to read in college. And before I came to college, I thought poetry was awesome and that I could just kind of throw some flowers down on the paper and then I learned uh, that no, I actually, it's a lot deeper than that and I need a road map for people to get to where my head is trying to take them. Thank you so much. Enjoy your retirement. I was Rick's student from 1992 to 1997 and I just wanted to say that as hard as it is to imagine UTC without Rick, uh, it is harder to imagine myself. Rick, you have been the most profound teacher of my life. Uh, you taught me to write, taught me about poems, but more than that, you taught me to be a thinker and a person. Um, when I think back to workshop, I have all kinds of great memories, but what I really remember is you on 101 and 102. As a teacher now myself and as a writer, I draw on those classes so often, the breadth and depth of them and the ways that we learn to make connections in there. 
Um, I can't wait to see what your next adventure is and I can't wait to follow your poems into the future and I just want to say thank you. Uh, I remember the first time uh, I walked into Rick's poetry workshop uh, in uh, my freshman year and it was like no course I had ever been in before or since. Um, the conversations in there were so uh, lively and engaging. The, the students were so committed and so serious and there was um, there were students in there who were fourth years and there were students in there who were first years and uh, it was a, a life-altering experience and even though I had no interest in poetry when I went walked into that classroom and never wanted to write a poem uh, I knew that I had to be in that class as much as I could and so I ended up taking it eight, eight times. I, was, I took Rick's Poetry Workshop eight times in my, my four years at uh, UTC. And it remains the single greatest uh, class I've ever taken. And it's because it's not a class. Um, Rick has some kind of magical power to uh, create uh, writing communities, right? He somehow convinces, you know, uh, ignorant uh, children that they are real writers and that the work that they're doing is is vital and that they should uh, be committed to it and treat it seriously. And that it's infectious and everybody signs on. And I was, uh, uh, I'm still, you know, enormously grateful that I was able to be part of such a, a vital and interesting writing community in the time that I was there. And it, it's all because of uh, this, this sort of magical spell that Rick Jackson is, is able to, to cast uh, over his students. And he can never be replaced or replicated.